Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing the first video of my making a webtoon comic series, video series. I want to cover all the things I do and tips and tricks I've learned from making a webtoon series for a little over two years, probably almost three. I would have to go back and look. My name is Casey Sows and I'm the author, artist, editor, and everything to be honest for the comic The Fish That Loved the Bird. A quick history of that. It was supposed to be a short 20 page-ish comic that I was going to print and sell at a little comic fair I was going to be in. I did that. And then I decided why not post it online for other people. Webtoons was just coming into light at the time, so I decided to try it out. Especially after all the stuff Tapastic was trying to pull at the time. Webtoons was created in 2014, I think, but I can honestly say I'd never heard of it till about 2015-16. And I know Webtoons is a part of the line company, so like the company's been around for longer, but I think Webtoons was a more recent development. So on to making the actual comic. The first part of every comic is the story. You have to have a story and characters to make one. For me, this was very easy because I've had these characters for a long time. Also, jokes on me, this comic is technically an AU of my characters, but it's obviously gotten far away from that. So I'm just rolling with it at this point. I've had Kaito and Izumi since about 2007. They were my first OCs and I just kept redoing them as time passed. I would show their evolution, but a lot of that is gone or missing into the wind or at my parents, it's at my parents' house, whatever. They went from the classic really cringe middle school characters to just kind of cringe and that's where they are now. So I already had my characters, so I just had to come up with a story. At the time, and currently, I just wanted to draw mermaids. I just wanted to make a comic about mermaids. That was about the only thought process I had. And ironically, Kaito originally was a bird character, but it made more sense for him to be the mermaid in this situation. If he was under the authoritarian kind of government parroting system that Izumi is, he would not risk being caught where he wasn't supposed to be. But in the mer world, if he was where he was not supposed to be, he wouldn't be jailed or punished or anything else like that. It was just frowned upon. So I had to make Izumi the bird. That's it. I will say I was not clever and just made it a war of two worlds. It's a very common theme in fantasy, but that was the beginning to my plot. I start with the basic overall arc of the story in a paragraph at the top. The main plot, some of the high points, the climax, just to remind myself what I'm leading up to. It would normally be about a paragraph or two, depending how long the story is. Then I make bullet points. The bullet points, most of the time, barely make sense or include things I want to include. But not a lot of details or nothing truly set in stone. Just like fun little quirky things I want to happen, want to remember that I had that idea. And I just list them out so I don't forget to include them when I start the script writing. From there, I use a website called Celtics. Celtics, I don't actually know how it's pronounced. It's basically a script writing website that you can use for free. Um, it's free up to three scripts and I think it's fantastic for what I want to do. I use the script form because it's the easiest form for me. I know some people who just work off their bullet points and other that write it out like a real fiction or book story. It's all up to you and what you're comfortable with. I would mess around and see what hits enough words for you to work from, but also not too many that it's just writing a book instead of writing a comic. And when I say writing a script, I mean like writing a script for a play. Like if you've read Romeo and Juliet in school, that's like a script. So that's the basic format. Not hardly that intense, but the basic layout is the same. The one complaint I have about Celtics is the limit of three scripts. Initially it was okay, cause I was only working on one. When you try to write more stories, you quickly hit that limit. Then when you delete a script because you download it to your computer, you can download it to your computer so you can technically write more. Besides that, you have to go into the trash and delete it again for them to actually register that a slot is open. It's very strange, you have to delete it twice. I guess it's a safety feature so you don't, so you don't lose anything. They also try to sell you and upgrade at every turn. What are we gonna do about that? Everyone tries to sell you something and that's fine. People need to make a living. Another thing that's probably really just a personal thing is at the bottom it has a little timer that has a work 
like typing and then a thinking and I get stressed when the thinking timer is like an hour and the writing is like two minutes because I'm like I'm trying to work but I have to think about it. You could just hide it. It's fine. I'll explain script writing format really quick just in case it sounds like something you want to look into. So for the script writing format there's a gray bar at the top that's the scene heading where the scene is taking place. It doesn't have to be that specific unless it needs to be specific. I usually just put exterior forest so I know where it's set but I'm not like the forest behind the tree where the whatever, I don't know. Then after the header, it goes to the action line, which is what the characters are doing. The big thing in with script writing is you stick to what they're doing, not their feelings, not their emotions, just what are they doing, their motion, their movement. It's so you don't get too caught up in the details of their expression. That'll be something you work out when you draw it. Then for the dialogue, it centers the name and then puts it in all caps of the character speaking and then what they're saying below it. You hit enter between all of these. You can add little parentheses to express emotion if it's something that's really important or you might forget. I know it's a common thing to say but I really think it's easier to write a script when you get into it obviously but I mean don't force yourself if it's just not coming at that time. Write down your thoughts throughout the day and get yourself excited to work on the story. It does wonders for me to not force myself to write and just kind of like put notes in my phone and then add it to the story later. I also want to add real quick some people do plan out the beginning and middle blah whatever every part of their comic before starting. I did not. I had a lot of plot points and how it started, but I let the story drive me rather than me trying to drive the story. It's not a way everyone can work, and it's very <laughs> disorderly and can be really chaotic, but I like it. It allows me to learn things about the characters as I'm creating the story and lets me grow as I go rather than be forced to do what I have already written. I try to keep most things vague and let the details come as they need to. So that's it for this video. Please let me know if you want more details or want me to go farther in depth about the steps of this process, the script writing specifically. Not so much coming up with a story, that's kind of on you. Or you can get a writer that'll do all this for you. That's a, that's a good cheat code. So thanks so much for watching and watch for part two of the series, which is going to be thumbnailing and program settings. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you guys next time.